In the Marshall Islands and some of the other island countries in the world that are, you know, only a meter or two above sea level, I mean, they are really bearing the brunt of climate change. Last year's high tides here in the Marshall Islands were the worst they'd ever had. Hundreds of people were flooded out of their houses and they had to declare a national state of emergency. And it's, it's going to get much worse in, in coming years. It's likely that a two to five meter uh, rise is possible within 100 years. You know, the sea level is rising here. The tides are getting worse. Just walking around here, you see how the shoreline erodes. Um, you know, it's not like they can retreat to higher ground. Unless something changes, unless we can put a break on the uh, carbon footprint and provide this kind of coral reef uh, shoreline protection, uh, we're looking at the last few generations here, and that would be very unfortunate. For over 100 countries, coral reefs are the major source of national marine biodiversity, tourism earnings, fisheries earnings, and they're responsible for almost all the shore protection. The idea was to build the largest bio-rock reef uh, in the world. So we are able to grow protected barriers faster than sea level rise. Once the stuff grows, there'll be corals all over the outside, and the inside will be almost like a semi-cave. It'll be a completely different habitat. We had a real meeting of the minds around the understanding of how wind power projects such as this one could really enhance and expand the capacity of bio-rock reef structures. Hopefully a, a start of a much larger process that can inspire others to uh, follow this small example and, and really uh, begin to turn around the, the equation that we have right now. The point of this project is really a demonstration project. We're not claiming that it's at all enough to solve the problem. It's enough to show that a solution is possible to the problem if you know, the will were there and the resources were available.